I'm going to start off by asking you all to check underneath your chairs. What you'll find is there's nothing under there. <laughs> I'm going to get to that in a second. Today I'm going to speak to you about communication, about the role our subconscious plays on the way we communicate, and also the challenges that we are facing where we're now actively shifting to a digital communication future. And finally, uh, we'll glimpse into the future and see what's cooking in the communications kitchen. I'm Jan Hamstutz, and I was born to counterculture parents, and I grew up on a hippie commune in the subtropical rainforests of Eastern Australia. The house that my parents built uh, was powered by solar power, fed by rainwater, and we had a micro farm with cows, chickens, and a fruit orchard. Sounds like you're all jealous, I know. Uh, but the environment that I grew up in uh, was a little bit different for me. I was environmentally friendly before it was cool to be environmentally friendly. And what I mean by that is up until the age of seven, I had a small black and white TV about the size of an iPhone screen. It took going to a friend's house to find out that the Simpsons were actually yellow. During my upbringing, technology was therefore extremely limited, so we put a greater emphasis on face-to-face -face interaction. It's crazy to see how far we've come technologically as humanity since my childhood, which only seems like a moment ago. When I left high school, the iPhone had only just been invented. So it's clear to see that we are progressing with communication very fast. Over millions of years, we have become very good at face-to-face -face interactions. Through physical presence, we build trust. It's basically just easier for us to understand each other when we're in the same place. We remember better what we hear, sense, and feel. And we as humans have trained ourselves to expect physical presence as the benchmark for effective communication when two people are in the same room. As I said, physical presence builds trust. So it's not just about the transfer of information from me to you. It's also about how your subconscious, how you receive that information. Your subconscious is trying to decide if it's comfortable with the information transfer and with who is transferring that information. Kind of like when your subconscious went crazy when I asked you to look underneath your chair, you're trying to decide if that information was credible or not. This is our primal subconscious activating something called the fight or flight response. We actually experience this whenever we walk down the street and someone walking towards us comes close uh, within our vicinity, within our comfort zone. Our subconscious forces our body to scan that individual to determine if they're comfortable with them being in your space or not. And what that means is, for much of our history, another human being was actually the most dangerous person in our environment. And most of the time, we don't even realize that this psychological validation is happening until you're walking down the street and you both simultaneously do it together and you lock eyes and it becomes awkward. Thanks, subconscious. This mechanism is at play while we are communi communicating to each other on a daily basis. For communication to be accept uh, effective, our subconscious needs to feel comfortable. Humans began communicating in order to build community. And as these communities grew larger, the mediums that we use to communicate have become more important than ever. Humans developed this technology these technologies that we all use to bridge distance. Writing was the first breakthrough, and then the telephone gave us voice. Now, video conferencing gives us bits of body language. However, recent global events have shown us that even the current gold standard of communication, video conferencing, falls far short in providing us with the ability to build meaningful, trust-based, and intimate relationships. Humanity has now spread to all corners of the globe, and the need for us to stay connected is more important than ever. If 
a physical meeting is our benchmark for effective communication, then the past two years have shown us that digital communication is lacking the important psychological traits that our subconscious desperately needs. This is the crux of my talk. This is called the intimacy gap in digital communication. So what can we do to fill this gap? We need to ensure that the why of communication is not forgotten by the mostly binary technologists out there creating our digital communication future. And what I mean by this is the way we communicate digitally needs to evolve in order to satisfy the human expectation. An acute focus needs to be placed on how the information is received by our subconscious as opposed to just how it is transferred technologically. Our psychological needs must be met in these circumstances. And the best way to do this is to mimic the way that we have interaction, uh, interacted with each other for millennia by putting people digitally or physically present in the same space. The technology sector as a whole is now moving towards mimicking our primal behaviors like voice activation, hey Siri, I hope no phones go off right now, or gesture recognition in virtual reality. When mimicking our primal human, human behavior becomes a technology challenge, we call this human-centered design. Basically, that technology will inevitably evolve uh, to replicate the format in which we have interacted with each other since the beginning of time. When we approach this tra trajectory from a psychological viewpoint, we are talking about bridging that intimacy deficit in our interactions. So what does the future of communication look like? In order to understand the future of communication, we need to understand the concept of the metaverse. The metaverse is the notion that the internet, as we currently know it, will evolve, breaking free from its two-dimensional barriers that's been built around it for the past 20 plus years, and turning it into a three-dimensional ecosystem, where experiences and data are overlaid over our real-world environments, places where they're most effective for us. An example of this is, if you want to know Tuesday's weather, you should just look up at the sky and say, show me Tuesday's weather, and the weather data will appear over the horizon for you. Or, if you are navigating down the street using maps, it's best for that maps data to be overlaid over the street that you're trying to navigate in order to show you the way. This example is actually already available in Google Maps today. The metaverse is coming faster than most of us even realize. This metaverse concept will allow us to change the game in communication as well. Looking at a vacant space, you could just say, beam grandma, and a life-size, real-time stream of grandma will appear in your space, digitally present, for a long overdue and social distance catch-up. You could have a chat to her and see how she's going. Or, more than that, you could beam your fitness instructor onto your terrace for a workout with a beautiful view in the background because you work remotely now. Or you can discuss your mortgage with your banker in your study. Or even see your favorite performer perform a live, intimate concert on your carpet in your living room. The company that I founded, Beam, along with a crack team of engineers and visionaries, is already creating this communications tool for the metaverse. From feeling that close presence of a faraway loved one or an intimate live performance in your space, digital presence in the metaverse allows us to bridge that intimacy gap in digital communication. And while it's going to be a long time before technologies like ours can fully replicate a face-to-face -face physical interaction, I think back at seven-year-old me sitting on the floor in front of that tiny little black and white TV, and I just know that we as humanity are so, so far down the road in creating a new digital world. However, we still have so much to build. Where can you see use cases and spaces where digital communication is required to evolve in order to bridge that intimacy gap? Thank you so much for listening. Thank you.